Okay, another great math book today by E.T. Bell, Men of Mathematics. Now, it's, it's a big one. And I'm going to be completely honest. I have not read the whole thing. I thought about not blogging on it until I read the whole thing, and I thought, I don't know when I'm going to get to reading the whole thing. And I, and I want people to know that it's a really, really valuable resource. Now, we have some other um, math books for younger kids that just introduces them to there are people that are mathematicians and this is what mathematicians do and they're real people like you and I and they think about numbers and and we'll you know we'll pull out a little bit of Archimedes that you can you can read a little bit of him a little bit of Nicomachus and and we we've, we've done some Euclid and things like that but this is a modern read the lives and achievements of the great mathematicians from um, Zeno to Pion Pionquier I think is how you say it it is a fabulous reference book. I've started several times to read from the beginning. You can see kind of some of my markings here going through the ancient mathematicians. It's a fabulous resource. Like if you're going to do a history class with youth or if you're going to have a book group and you're going to read about a certain time period, this is a really fun book to have on hand. And just go in here and pick like one mathematician that lived then and find out what was going on in math at the time in history that you're reading about. So let's say um, you want to know about what was happening in the 1600s or whatever. Now, this is almost entirely modern mathematicians because most of our advanced math starts with like Pascal and Newton. Before, there's only a hand, there's only four or five in here. This is how he's done it. He's got the ancient, the ancient mathematician Zeno, um, Eudoxus, and Archimedes in one chapter, and then he's got Descartes in another chapter. So we're skipping from ancient Egypt all the way forward to Descartes. Now, you can make an argument that Nicomachus is large, is partly responsible for that because in the great book set, he's kind of the last mathematician and he said, Here's the times tables, here's what we know, and until we figure out this part, we can't move forward, and people couldn't figure out that part. And so um, other mathematicians move forward with other facets of math, and then they went back to um, discover other elements of math. So you could do a book group or a little class on um, a specific kind of math, or on a specific person, and you could read about them here and in other places, or you could do one that was just on mathematicians, and you could pick like five that they could read from this book, but it's just really a great reference, and what's going to happen, this is why it's so great, it's because he doesn't just tell you about the life of that mathematician, he explains what they discovered mathematically, and he tries to help work out some of the math for you so that you can kind of understand those math concepts. So if you were to start at the beginning and just read this whole book, I think it could be, I mean, it could be a whole math, whole year-long math class in itself. It's 575 pages. And it's not difficult language. It's just that he's going to teach you math concepts that that person discovered, so it's going to be hard that way. But if you really wanted to get a history of math and you really wanted to understand what's going on, this is, I think, the, the book to get. So, um, he's going to teach you, he says like, um, he tells you a little bit about the character of that person and then, um, and the titles tell you a little bit like Pascal, Greatness and Misery of Man. And so you get an idea of kind of what he was like. And then you go through and you find out, oh, these are all the things that he came up with that were really new in the math world that made a difference in how math built on itself. Um, these are new things. He explains that, um, let's see, for example, the second claim of Archimedes to modernity is also based upon his methods. Anticipating Newton and Leibniz by more than 2,000 years, he invented the integral calculus and one of his problems anticipated their invention of the differential calculus. These two calculuses together constitute what is known as the calculus, which has been described as the most powerful instrument ever invented for the mathematical exploration of the physical universe. So, you know, to me, calculus is the name of a class in school. Okay, 
but it's actually a way of thinking about the universe and it's a way of exploring the universe. It's a way of understanding life. Like, and I talk about this in different books that we review here. Art is a way of looking at the world. Science is a way of looking at the world. And math is a way of numerating the world and looking at the world as numbers and equations and connections. And it's making connections in new ways. And many of the connections that are made, you know, science and math are very intimately tied. But what people also don't know often is that Math and science and art are all intimately tied. Art is dependent on those other two disciplines as they are with each other. So it'll give you a foundation. He's modern minds and ancient bodies. He's trying to help us understand how we got to, to, math, to the math that we have today. And, um, and so he's only pulling out the people that really um, made a difference on, on modern math. Um... Let me give you a little bit of what he's kind of... It says here... He's got here something really interesting. They say what they say, let them say. Motto of Marshall College, Aberdeen. And then he's got quotes. The, pure, the science of pure mathematics in its modern developments may claim to be the most original creation of the human spirit. That's Whitehead. So... This is really um, number rules the universe, the Pythagoreans. He's got these really cool quotes at the beginning of the book from all these mathematicians. Here's another one I love. To create a healthy philosophy, you should renounce metaphysics. You should renounce metaphysics, but be a good mathematician. That's Bertrand Russell. So that's a worldview. That's a, that's a, a humanist worldview that rejects God in metaphysics, but uses math instead by Bertrand Russell. Uh, mathematics is the only good metaphysics. That's Lord Kelvin. So there are these opposing beliefs. Kelvin said, you have to believe uh, math helps you. Anyway, there, this connection between God and math in these quotes is really, um, really makes you think. He's got quotes by Abraham Lincoln. Anyway, there's three or four pages of really interesting quotes and things to think about. Then a really good introduction. Um, he says... This section is headed introduction rather than preface in the hope of decoying habitual preface skippers into reading for their own comfort at least the following paragraphs down to the first row of stars before going on to meet some of the great mathematicians. I should like to emphasize first that this book is not intended in any sense to be a history of mathematics or any section of such a history. The lives of mathematicians presented here are addressed to the general reader and to others who may wish to see what sort of human beings the men were who created modern mathematics. So it's not a history book per se. It is the story of different mathematicians, but it's done in a way that helps build on itself so that you have a better understanding of modern mathematics when you're done. Anyway, I've got on for quite a while. It's a really good resource. I think you should own it and you should reference it and you should use it with a lot of other things that you do in understanding. You know, not, don't just say, Algebra is this class and it's the set of equations. Understand what algebra is. Understand what calculus is by using this book and also another one that I'll post on that's, a, that's about definitions and things like that in math. But it's called Men of Mathematics by E.T. Bell and um, it's a really, really important mathematics resource to have in your library. See you next time.